Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the last tutorial from the Space Shooter tutorial series. Uh, this tutorial, we're going to do the finishing touches and get the game over screen working. So, the first thing on the list is to get the game over screen working. The next on the list is to get the bullet fixed in order to, and so it's positioned closer to the enemy's turret. And then to test it out. So, this will be the last tutorial for the main series. The premium members will have the extras for a while before the public will, just to give it a nice advantage to the premium members. And the extras will cover all sorts of things from a pixel shader to a particle system for stars to a more dynamic collision detection and stuff like that. Alright, so let's get started with the game over screen. Let's go ahead and right click the screens folder. Let's go to add class. And we're going to call this class game over screen. Capital G O S. All right. Now that's going to be a public class game over screen and that's going to be from menu screen. Okay, now just like we did in the pause and main menu, we need to create menu entry objects for each menu entry we want. In this case, we want game over, do we want to play again, yes or no, or quit the entire game. So let's say play again, comma quit. So those are the two menu entries. Then let's do the constructor, public game over screen. Opening, closing, parentheses. Then opening, closing, curly bra brackets. Now we set play again is equal to new menu entry. And again, this is the menu entry class, so we can set the current menu screen that this belongs to. So this, comma, and a title. Let's say game over. Uh, space and then dash space play again question mark and end quote and parentheses semicolon quit is equal to new menu entry this comma quote quit game end quote and parentheses semicolon all right so you can look at the pause screen and see what we're doing here in the pause screen, we set parent is equal to play screen. This will not happen in the game over screen. When we hit game over, that's it. Our play screen is done. When we want to play again, when we click this menu entry, we will generate a new play screen. So I, everything will be initialized again. So we set the new menu entries, set the title. So now we want to set the transition time. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. So just so I get the one second effect in here. All right. Same thing with the selected and non-selected. I'm gonna copy and paste that in here. You are welcome to change these colors. Now when I click the color, I need to click the drop down and go to using Microsoft.xnet.framework.graphics or you can just type it in manually if you want to do it that way. So now we need initialize, load content, and each of the button actions. All right, so let's do initialize. Public override initialize. Delete base dot initialize. And just like this, we need to set the position, set the relative position, then add it to the menu entries list. And then when we get the methods done, we need to go back and add the selected uh, event handlers. So the first one up is a play again. Play again dot set position. It's a method, so opening parentheses, and it's a new vector two, new vector two. So we need to add using Microsoft at XNA dot framework. And let's add it just like the other one, somewhere in the top left, but more towards the center. So 300, comma, 200. 
or 350 comma 200 let's do that comma initial position is true all right press enter twice because we need to add the selected now quit dot set to relative position now remember set relative position will determine where the quit will go depending on a menu entry passed to this method so new vector 2 so from the play again menu entry we want to push the quit 0 in the x direction sprite font dot line spacing plus 5 in the y direction comma the entry is a reference play again and true for the initial position and parentheses and semicolon so now we need to add it to the menu entries dot list so dot add play again and menu entries dot add quit all right so now we need the low content that's just so we can get the sprite font going public override load content delete the base so now just like all the other load contents we need to get the content manager from the sprite or the screen manager so we type in content manager and we need to add user microsoft at external framework dot content it's going to be content is equal to screen manager dot content and then lowercase cont or sprite font is equal to lowercase content that load it's a type of sprite font and the asset name is the content it's the fonts folder and then the menu font so we do the folder first fonts two slashes menu just the asset name. All right, so now we have sprite font loaded. So when we go to initialize, this will work. So now we need to do the individual uh, methods for when we press the button. So we do uh, void play again. Uh, let's see what we'd set it as. Select. So play again select is what our naming convention is in this one. Open in parentheses object sender comma event args e. Opening and closing curly brackets. So now whenever we select the play again, we want to quit this one. Exit screen. And then if we want to set screen manager dot add screen new play screen and now we're ready to go. Alright, so now the second one void quit select object sender event args e this will be exactly like the pause screen, so screen manager .game exit. Again, if you want to add a screen that says thank you for playing and then wait a few seconds, just do what I did here. And instead of new play screen, it'll say thank you screen or something like that. Okay. So now go back to the initialize and in the white spaces lines we added we need to add the select event handler so play again in the play again white line play again that select selected plus equals new event handler opening parentheses and we pass it the method name just the name of the method in the parentheses and parentheses and semicolon likewise with the quit quit dot selected plus equals new event handler and then pass it the method name 
Okay. So let's save this. Now we need to modify the play screen in order to throw the new game over screen whenever we reach zero as a health. So new game over. So we did that in the update method, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, if game over, you did it at the very end of the update method, at the very end of the main if, because then we have L space dot initialize. So if game over, we exit the screen, and then we set screen manager dot add new game over screen. And I always forget that, go back to the game over screen and change the namespace to everything else, just so it's easier. So now we go back to the play screen and it's all fine. We save all. Now this will not throw yet. We need to do that with the uh, player object. And we do that by determining if it's either dying or dead. If it's dying, we are game over anyway. So that's why I chose to do that in the uh, sample. So when we go to the player, All right, so in this player.cs class, in the update method, we have if status is equal to dead, and this is where we actually need to set the game over uh, boolean. And we set that up in the play screen, and it's a public, uh, public static boolean. And we did it that way, so we can do this. And if status is equal to object status dot dead, this will not work, it has to be dying. Because if it's dead, it's going to be removed from the list and we will no longer call update. We cannot call update and get this dead status to check. So it has to be dying. It will still call this update method. When it gets to the dead state, it will no longer get in this update method. Alright. So when it's dying, we set game over is equal to true. So in play screen, under if game over, we need screen manager to add screen instead of add. So just for testing purposes, so you're not sitting here watching me play for a few minutes before I finally die, let's set hits left is equal to 1, and let's go. Alright, so I only have one hit left, so let's wait until the enemy spawns. And when I get hit, zero hits left, that's it, game over. Play again or quit game. Let's play again. Now I have one hit left. 